wanted to know what Christianity is all about. Well, what is the Bible? How do I know the truth? Who is Jesus Christ? What does the future hold? Are there angels? And where did I come from? And why am I here? And what happens when I die? Greetings, this is Dr. Willis Newman from Newman Ministries International. And we will seriously explore these powerful questions and many more in this series on the 11 basic foundational blocks of the historical Christian faith. I also urge you to visit our website and the website at uh, BibleTeachingAbout.com. Our online Bible training courses can be found at NewmanBibleAcademy.org. And we have over 300 free articles plus several very affordable ebooks and paperbacks a question and answer section, and much, much more. And our subjects include theology and in counseling and the Christian life. And these are carefully designed to make Jesus Christ real to your life and to help you grow in your own spiritual life. And you can find the script for this lesson, including the many Bible verses, on our website. So stay with us. These studies relate directly to your life and all the challenges that you can face. So let's get started on this wonderful, wonderful journey. And the first building block of Christianity is to identify and explain our source of truth, which is the Bible. Because our understanding of Christianity comes from the Bible. And thus we need to know some vital facts about that wonderful book. And I answer three questions in this lesson. What is the Bible? And how do we know what the Bible is? And why did God give us the Bible? And some of the key Bible verses I will show you are Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2, 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 16, and 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, and Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. So what is the Bible? The Bible is the only true word of God to humanity. Now that's a bold statement, but it's true. And the Bible tells us that God has revealed himself to mankind, that is, God has given man information about himself that mankind could not know in any other way except that God himself should disclose that knowledge. God has made himself known in a general way through nature, according to Romans, and our conscience, and also God's management of the universe. Well, <clears throat> but it, the, the, you know, these ad avenues many times leave us confused about what God is like and how he relates to us. Well, because of this, God has revealed or disclosed or unveiled himself to mankind in a special way with very specific information. So let me illustrate. Living your life in your village or town or city can be very isolated while at the same time many things happen in the other parts of the world. Billions of people live in America and Asia and Europe and Africa and India and other places. And people there do things and live a life that we know nothing about. Unless someone sends or brings the news by magazine, television, newspapers, letters, radios or whatever. Well, in a similar way, God has revealed or sent special information to us. Information we could never know unless he were to bring or send that news. According to Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 says that during the Old Testament times God revealed himself and or his message in many ways. Now some of those ways were through judges, through laws, through ceremonies and kings and prophets. But when God sent Jesus, however, he gave his final special revelation kind to mankind until he comes again. And the words in verse 2, has spoken, indicates a final and completed action. Jesus communicated this revelation through the original apostles and confirmed it with mighty miracles and signs. Well, God then terminated any further special revelations to man. In the last few verses of the last book of the Bible, Jesus strongly orders that no one should add or take away from the Bible. Well, Revelation was the last book written in the New Testament. And therefore, it is done. So according to the Bible, then, we have no need for people or other books claiming to have messages from God. Peter said that we already have everything that, we, that pertains to life and godliness. What good news that is to know that God did not forget to tell us something that we must know in order to be saved. 
to go to heaven, to have our sins forgiven, or to have life. Well, <clears throat> I don't mean that the Bible is just a dry rule book to follow, because Christianity is a living, dynamic, and a personal experience with Jesus Christ. But our Christian experience is defined and instructed and affirmed by the Bible, as taught to us by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us more specifically how God communicated to us through, through uh, His Word. In 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 17, it says that all the Scripture is inspired by God. Inspired means God breathed. That is, the Bible is a result of the breath of God, because breath carries our words that we communicate with. The Bible, then, is the very words of God. All Scripture refers to all parts of the Scripture, whether it's history, culture, geography, or matters dealing with our life and faith. And the word all also limits the scope of God's special revelation to the Bible. He did not say all Scriptures and newspapers and some novels or some textbooks or whatever. So what an encouragement knowing that we don't have to guess which parts of the Bible are from God and which parts aren't. That would be confusing. Jesus even went on to say that his word would never pass away and that scripture cannot be broken. Oh, what wonderful news. And what a confidence that gives when we face problems in life, death and sickness and loss and economic crisis or family troubles. And we're told in 2 Peter the mechanics of how God gave scriptures to his messengers. It says that scripture is not of any man's opinion or will, but they were moved along by the Holy Spirit to speak the words of God, much like the wind fills a sail and carries the boat along over the swells of the beautiful sea. In other words, we can say that God directed the human authors so that without hindering their individual personalities and styles, they wrote without error God's exact and complete thoughts in the original manuscripts. Number two, how do we know what the Bible is? Good question. It would not be reasonable for me to say these wonderful things about the Bible uh, without offering some evidence that what I say is true. Well, for example, let's say that we want to buy a boat to go fishing in the ocean or the lake or the river, and perhaps we see a used boat that's advertised on the bulletin board down at the local store. The owner said that the boat is tied up at the wharf, and has a new engine, has a paint job, no rod in the hull, and many, many other great claims about the vessel. Well, we wouldn't just take the owner's word for it, but we would drive down to the wharf, to see for ourselves if the evidence matched up to the owner's claims. Now, in the same way, we need to examine the evidence about the Bible. Though there are many convincing proofs that the Bible is the literal Word of God, we offer only four in this short space today. First, the Bible itself claims to be the Word of God. And adding to the verses we have already referred to, we see that the Old Testament prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, said that their writings were the Word of God. We see that even Moses said that the tablets were the work of God and the writing was the writings of God. That's down in Exodus 32, 16. So scriptures are called by Paul the Word of God and the oracles of God and the sacred writings. Wow powerful stuff. The examples go on, but suffice it to say that the Bible claims to be the Word of God. Secondly, we have the amazing facts of fulfilled prophecy. Men could predict the future. If we could, then we would be rich. If we could predict the stock market or world events, we would become even richer. And only God, however, can predict that future. So according to Bible scholars, 27% of the Bible deals with predictive prophecies. There are over 1,800 predictions that are recorded in these sacred pages. And some of the predictions are to be in the fulfilled in the future, and some already have been fulfilled in past history. And prophecies in the Bible are clear, with pinpoint accuracy, not like the fuzzy talk by some so-called prophets. For example, there are over 300 prophecies concerning the first coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I offer just six to illustrate the amazing quality of Bible prophecy. It was predicted that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. That's powerful. And Isaiah predicted that Christ was to suffer and to make atonement for our sins. Wow. 
And the psalmist said that Christ would be given gall and vinegar to drink, and he actually was at his crucifixion. Again, that men would divide Christ's garments and cast lots for his clothing. That happened as well. And finally, the psalmist predicted that Christ's body would be resurrected from the dead. And that is a wondrous thing, valuable to our lives. And all of these predictions came true. And only God can predict the future. And therefore, the Bible is from God. Now, the third proof that I offer is the testimony of Jesus Christ. He called the Old Testament the Scriptures. And Jesus believed the Old Testament creation story of Adam and Eve. And the miracles of Jonah and the big fish. And of Moses and of the burning bush. He believed the Old Testament. Now, Christ communicated his New Testament revelation to us through his appointed apostles and confirmed his message by many powerful miracles. And it was climaxed by that grandest miracle of, miracle of all, his resurrection from the dead. Well, what else? Think of it this way. Jesus rose from the dead to prove what he had to say. Nobody can offer evidence like that. Well, to say the Bible is not of God is calling Jesus Christ a liar, and nobody in their right mind would do that. The last proof I offer is the character of God. God loves us. He's kind, he's honest, and he cannot lie. He is holy, and he's righteous and true, beyond defect in character. God knows everything, is everywhere, and is all-powerful. In a word, God is perfect. We must then ask ourselves the question, would God lie to us? Would he mislead or deceive us? Well, no, God forbid such a thought. And the conclusion is this, that the character of God extends to his word and the Bible is his word. And when we decide to take a trip over an ocean or a lake, for example, we take the word of the boat operator, that the boat will survive the sometimes rough and choppy waters. And we get in the boat, and we entrust ourselves to the captain as the boat chugs out through the waves. We trust him, because he's a man of good character and of skill, and we can believe him. Well, in the same way, God is of perfect character, so surely we can trust him and trust his Bible. We must believe that whatever we say about God, we must say about his Bible, his special revelation to mankind. We can trust God, we can trust the Bible. And to you farmers who grow your crops, believe the Bible. To you fishermen who take your boat and nets out to go find fish, trust in the Bible. And you faithful housewives taking care of your children in your household, believe the Bible. You office workers, trust the Bible. And to you wives and children whose husband and daddy is traveling overseas or finding work in a different land, believe the Bible, trust in it. And to you government workers and your leaders who try your best to run your country, believe and trust in the Bible. In the Bible you will find comfort and wisdom and encouragement and instruction and correction and all blessing. And through the Bible you will find the mind of God. And through the Bible you can find how to have your sins forgiven, how to go to heaven, how to have peace with God through Jesus Christ, have fulfillment in this life and eternal life in the future. Oh, I tell you, the Bible is incapable of teaching deception. It is sufficient in all questions of faith and practice, and it is understandable. Just everyday people can understand what it says. And the Bible is authoritative. It's not forged, and the texts are truthful. And the Bible is a magnificent treasure that God has given to us. Now let's go down to the third question. Why did God give us the Bible? Well, that's kind of puzzling, isn't it? The first of three reasons that the Bible is that the Bible is a standard of judgment used against those who reject our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he himself said that he who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. And the word I, spo I spoke will judge him on that last day. Well, when a thief or someone who was convicted of a crime comes before the judge to be sentenced, well, the judge bases his sentence upon the Constitution and the laws of that country. And in the same way, Jesus is saying that when those who reject Christ step up before the judgment seat of God, that person will receive his or her sentence based upon the Bible. And a second reason that God gave us the Bible is to tell us how to be saved. 
That's very good news. Christ told us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 well, when a ship or a fishing boat comes into the harbor, there's a great danger of running aground on the jagged reefs. And that would mean loss of the ship. So to help ships come safely through the channel, governments have put up a series of lights and markers to guide the ship. Well, if the captain or the pilot goes by those lights, then they will safely tie up at the wharf. And the same is true of the Bible. It is a light and a marker to point us safely to the harbor of salvation, which is in Jesus Christ. And just as a harbor is salvation for the ships, Christ is our harbor of salvation through faith in Him. And just as a deep channel is a way to the harbor, faith is a way to Jesus Christ, according to the Bible. And there's nothing we can do to get safely to heaven except to personally receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. That is faith. Baptism, good works, church membership, even religion or anything else cannot get us to heaven, but only faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is a personal relationship with Christ, not keeping a set of religious rules or rites. Well, the third and the final reason for the Bible is to give us uh, Christians doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction that we may be adequate and equipped for good works in this life. Well... We don't do good works, remember, to become a Christian, but because we are Christians, we must be careful to keep the cart after the horse and not before. We have now studied the first foundational block of Christianity, which is the Bible, and have answered three questions. What is the Bible? How do we know what the Bible is? And what did God, why did God give us the Bible? So I invite you to go to our website for the written script of this lesson with all the Bible verses there. So again, I encourage you to browse through the many free articles and the affordable books. Well, the books, they've been priced very low, but the contents are up to world-class standards and are used in our Bible colleges around the world in several languages indeed. We have offered these to help you succeed in your Christian life. And since this is a Christian ministry, we also ask for your prayer and for your financial support. And if you want greater depth in the Bible, we offer our book, You Can Believe the Bible. It's pages, details on how we got the Bible, proofs for the Bible, and the key church documents regarding the Bible. Much more information than here. All your questions will be answered. Just go to our website and click on the sections ebook slash bookstore. BibleTeachingAbout.com is our site. So until next lesson, may God richly bless you, my friend, in every way. Amen.